You know, just tune in. Gen 5 stuff, so tune in all this crap. And it's all torque based, virtual torque, and virtual VE, and nothing's real, and nothing makes sense. It's all math channels upon math channels of engineering stuff. So basically, you figure out, you know, what you gotta do, and then you go drive it, and you make all these little pretty graphs try and mimic the car in the best and worst driving conditions you can which is why we're seeing the great downtown of the city in a nutshell this would be o2 sensor the, basically the difference between what you're commanding for fuel and what the o2 sensor is seeing so this would be percent so this would show like oh in that cell of the map you need to put you need to add five percent of fuel basically it's basically the correction but on a Gen 5, which is anything like LT bay, LT motor stuff, you don't have all that, so it's all torque based. So you don't really get to do that, except for wide open throttle stuff, I guess. But so on this deal, we're actually this is the difference between the virtual VE table, the MAF, mass airflow sensor, and the dynamic air when in closed loop. About 50 things going on. They're basically, you know, it's just because you're all everything's worried about the torque number what's the predicted torque what's the actual torque what's the driver demand accelerator pedal and it's all very very crazy the cool thing is though is it's not like the back when i used to tune for a living it's not like that where you spend forever doing the ve table and you spend forever doing the map and then you put them together and you spend a little time fixing it and it's not like that they've come up with better ways to do it so now you can kind of do both at the same time but it also proves that one of them is bullshit if you can do both at the same time but but whatever it's working it runs good it sounds good you know got a little bit of corrections here and there the most of this is where we're at these numbers up here are basically when i started it and diesel that i haven't tuned out yet but so as we drive it around more it goes into other cells and just idle and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you want to try and get as many as you can. So you can see this little blue cursor there jumping around and that's populating those cells. And so if I can try and hit one there, it'll help me on the tuna, but I don't have to interpolate between those two cells. So you try, and, there it goes. So you're trying to be steady state until you can hit as many of those as you can and, you know. But we like to try to replicate as much as our what we're actually going to do with the vehicle when tuning it so we don't want to just put a basic easy tune in it and be like all right that's it never have to touch it again because it's not going to drive in that condition and then when you are driving it it's going to not act the same so i usually drive and tune at night and it's not it's a lot easier but then the problem becomes i run errands with it well yeah and so yeah. if the traffic doesn't force me to change my driving habit to the traffic, then it's only tuned for four o'clock in the morning on the highway. <laughs> Somebody asked if they did the same cam swap as us, like the Brian Tooley Racing 220 kit, if they would have to tune it. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you do an aftermarket, anytime you like go into the engine and do modifications that involve, that change the air model of the way the engine breathes, the camshaft, cylinder heads, crank, whatever, you know, anytime you go in there and change stuff, uh, all these things need to be adjusted to it. So yeah, definitely. Now, I will say that uh, when we put the cam in this deal, Brian Tooley gave a lot of the information you need for the VVT stuff, VCP, whatever, variable valve timing, VTEC. Mm -hmm. They gave us a lot of the information on the card that comes with the cam. It gives you the information on where to retard the camshaft and how much for the most power. And him and Martin Short or somebody spent 20 years on a dyno trying to figure that out. Uh, retarding camshafts a degree at a time until they got it right. And a lot of the tuners that I've seen, they just run them in map only and change some torque management stuff. And, and they still run with a camshaft. It, there's a there's just going to be a difference in whether it's calibrated or whether it's you know whether it runs so you know you can get a camshaft and you can 
put it in math only and it may run pretty decent right out of the box you know just but it won't be right and it won't do what everything you want it to do but if you want to learn more on that stuff like that's a whole that could be a week-long video but more on the tuning side with the gen 5 and hp tuners and stuff like gen 5 especially virtual torque stuff i would suggest like uh silver surfer 77u2 he's got a lot of stuff he makes tools to help you do it like you know excel spreadsheet tools and then uh smoke show on hp tuners web uh, forum or whatever like all those guys are uh really good and they have a lot of really in-depth stuff but matt sanford he's on youtube i watch this stuff too so yeah, those guys are you know professionals at this stuff i just do it on my stuff so and i just bitch about it really is all i really do i did have to build a cold air kit for it i didn't like the factory setup so uh, this is just some aluminum tubing. Uh, I uh, welded a Jodar uh, V-band clamp to the stock throttle body. Aluminum tubing over, put a MAF uh, bulkhead on it and a filter. And then it's got uh, for the catch cam, which I still have yet to mount that. I haven't decided what I like about it or what I don't. But for the catch can, I've made these uh, tubes to go to the valve covers. And that way, when it's wide open throttle, it still gets air going through the mass airflow sensor and tune-up's not off. And hopefully, it doesn't get as much oil in the damn motor, but we'll see. To be honest, I'm coming around on these motors. When we first started, I was like, man, fuck these things. These things are a pain in the ass. This thing sucks. And I was, I hate this. Red drink crap, blah, blah, blah. By the time it was over, it was like, eh, they're not so shitty. After driving it and tuning it, I'm like, Man, this, this thing makes some fucking horsepower. Like That one night you were like, I want one for Wanda. Yeah, I do. And I was like, I, I, I really just do. gave you that LS motor. Yeah, I want one for Wanda. I want a big naturally aspirated one for Wanda with the, and take the Pro Charger and shit off of it and just have some big, rowdy, naturally aspirated fucking LC like motor. Like this, but more, you know. But bigger and nastier. Yeah. It came time to do this. We looked around a little bit for parts. I was going to do my normal thing, which is call Darren or somebody, have him do a cam for it, and then call this guy and have Withers for it, and call these guys and do this, and, you know, at some point, though, it's like, hey, we need this thing to run, and we need to run right, and we don't need to reinvent the wheel here, so. Mm -hmm. Well, we shopped around on YouTube, listening to other people's, yeah, we did. and you found that one yeah, video, yeah. and you were so stuck on it that you wouldn't even consider any others, and it was this cam. Yeah, I listened to about 500... Because honestly, it doesn't matter how fast it is it's to escalate. It's not going to be fast. It's not going to outrun people. But So what does matter is the parking lot pimping. You know what I mean? It's got to sound just right. So without being too radical, it's got to sound right. So I listen to about every fucking vehicle you can listen to on YouTube that has a camshaft. And uh, there was one video that just sold it. Like, and like I can't, a white Tahoe. Or it was a white Tahoe or Suburban. The guy's name was Brad Henson, and it was on YouTube, and it's a white Yukon or Tahoe or Suburban, whatever, and it's on the dyno, and it's just sitting there idling, and I was like, oh yeah, there you go. It had the idle I wanted and the sound I wanted, so I called Brian Tooley. They sent us a kit, and I was surprised with the kit, because, I mean, it's, you know, I haven't bought a cam kit in a long time, yeah. and it wasn't like this back then, but man, yeah, it was a full deal. No, you know, you don't have to go looking for stuff or crawling around or nothing. Like, it was a really nice kit. It had good seals, good springs, titanium retainers and logs. And it came with push rods. When I used to do cam kits all the time, none of the push rods that came with the kits were the right length, but these actually were, had the right lifter preload, and I was like, hey, look at there. It came with lifters, like, it had every lifter trays, the DOD delete kit. Uh, it came with the uh, phaser deal for the timing chain mm -hmm. so that the camshaft's not going 50 degrees retarded or whatever. So, no, it was a really, I mean, honestly, that part of this whole process wasn't bad at all. Yeah, all of it was really nice. I mean, it had intake gas, it had everything. It was really nice. It was a good setup for sure. I. And the cool thing is it gives you the tuning part of it, which I was always worried about with these uh, variable valve timing cams. I'm impressed with all this stuff. I just changed the oil in it, so we've got a little over 500 miles on it. And uh, 
everything's flawless. Mm -hmm. like, that's the other thing is we don't really do brand specific stuff. Like we don't, we usually just say we got this or we got that or we put this in it, but we don't really go through and say like what brand we got or who we got it from and stuff. Because to be honest, you know, we don't know. You know, you could drive it for a week and it, everything could go to shit. You'd be like, man, them people or whatever. But mm -hmm. we got 500 miles on, we just changed oil and everything's perfect. So yeah. uh, really happy with all this stuff. That was a good deal. I'm very happy with it. So for all you guys that are in the same boat, well, if you have a newer GM, you're going, you're going to. Yeah, it's something. You're going to do it. I would suggest looking into, you know, doing something like we did. Now, the 220 cam is a little bit too big for a stock converter, depending on your preferences. I don't mind it, but, you know, if you were... Uh, if but they fully told us that. Oh, yeah, like, no. That wasn't, 100%. like, they, they acted said, like, they yeah, said. it's good. No, they told us straight up, stage two cam is what you want. For that vehicle, stage two cam with stock converter, blah, 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 is what you want. And I said, cool, and they sent it to me. And then I watched that video of the 220 cam, and I was like, oh, man, I need the other cam. So I called them back, and they said, no problem, send it back, we'll, we'll switch it out. They said, but, you know, it is on the verge of being a little too big for a stock converter. And, and they're right. It has a little bit of uh, clunkiness. The converter had the shutter, like the GM shutter in the converter. Oh, yeah. Like, that it got it, though. like, a, a year or so before, so it didn't come from this at all. But then when we were talking to Pete at Circle D, he said that once you get that shutter, yeah, it's kind of just, you can band-aid it, but you're going to have to get a new converter anyway. So. And that's the thing is, you know, I, I, we're never going to be done with any of this stuff, so it's like, why do, you know, why not get the camshaft that's a little bigger? And then, because we're going to do a converter anyway, we're going to do headers anyway, so might as well do it. And it worked, you know, works really good. Mm -hmm. And it just... If you turn the idle up to where it sounds like I, where I like it, you know, I like a higher idle. So you turn the idle up to 800, 850, it pushes pretty hard on the converter. But we also have giant I knew that. brakes. Yeah. But I knew that, you know, so. Alrighty, you want to fire it up? Yeah, let's hear it. Oh, still, I, I bet it still don't sound as good as Brad Henson's, but oh, you Jesus. be the judge. Did you go through this recently? <laughs> no, it's just in my head.